Alright, what's up YouTube? Chiboygan Logger coming at you, and I am going to start a new series of how to's, starting with Ogni, ending with this guy over here. And I will go through every ability, try to show you as much as I can possible, and if I can, I'll fit in a build at the end that I'd use on my daily gaming basis if I played this character. Now, um, starting with Ogni, there's going to be no charge, no nothing, probably don't know yet, and if there is, I'll put it in there. And, um, by the end of this season, by the end of this series, I might have charge, I might have pictures, I might have combos, tips and tricks, more advanced than what I'm starting out with now. But to get with it now, um, we're going to start with his passive. Um, Ogni's passive states, after hitting with four basic attacks, Ogni will gain a buff on the next cast of flames, cast of flame wave, or rain fire. All enemies hit by those abilities will additionally set a blaze, taking damage every 0.5 seconds for 3 seconds. Damage per tick is 5 damage, plus 10% of your magical, magical damage. Now, um... Real quick, if I go to God Builder, and this is my normal build. Um, let me just write down a few numbers real quick. Let me get a piece of paper. Alright. Um, his. Where's his magical power? Okay, right there. 693. At late game, he will have 693. Let's say. And then we'll have mid game. You won't have that, that, or that. So mid game, you'll have about around 230. This is 230. Uh, on top of stacks, because I know this gives you this. So I'll add, say, I don't know, let's say 20. So we'll have 250 at mid and 700 and 13 late game. And also, uh, raw twitterity increases it by like how much? Increases magical power by 20%. Now, if I open my calculator really quick, figure out what 25% of 713 is. 713 times all where to go 33 25 oh my off <laughs> times point 25 that's 128 plus 713 so late game you'll actually have 891.25 and these stats I will add into this so 10% of your damage okay so mid game your passive will deal your passive would deal 30 damage per tick for every tick which is half a second for 3 seconds so that's 6 ticks so 6 times 25 is like 150 that's 150 extra damage by the time you're level 10 Late game, that's um around eighty nine. So eighty nine plus five um times six, so that's like ninety four times six equals that's an extra five hundred and sixty four damage late game just by landing four extra auto attacks before you cast uh your two or your alt. That's what these. That's what it's telling you. Now let's get the noxious fumes. Noxious fumes is your first ability, and Agni summons a cloud of noxious fumes at his ground target location, doing damage every second. Firing any Agni's abilities into the fumes detonates the gas, stunning all enemies in the radius. That includes noxious fume or not flame. Sorry, flame waves. Uh, what is this one called? Path of flames. 
or Reign of Fire, which I'll get to later, shortly. Um, this right here is radius 20. It's actually pretty big. Um, damage per tick is, let's say, late game, you'll probably not even, uh, mid game, you'll probably have to level 10 because you don't want to upgrade this. This is the last thing you want to upgrade. So mid game, you stay around level 10. This is going to be at 10. So 10 plus 5%. So 250 times 0 0.5, 125. So that's 135 damage per tick. And how much, How when is each tick? I don't know when each tick is like technically detonated. I'm gonna guess half a second, so that's when this passive goes off. So you're dealing 125 damage per tick. This is not a tech, you don't wanna deal damage with this item. You want to use it for A, a stun, or B, the zone, which I will use for tips and tricks at the end of the video. Um, the flame, the fumes duration is 10 seconds. In smite, that can be pretty long and pretty short at the same time, depending on how you use it and how smart you use it. The stun duration is 1 second. That 1 second can be life or death. Because you stun them for 1 second, you hit them with your ult, bam. 300 plus 60% of 891. That's literally late game. That's about a quarter to third of an average assassin or mage's health. That one second can take out a quarter of someone's health. On top of the damage that came from the other ability that stunned them. So, the cost also goes up, sad face. Cooldown does not go down, sad face. That's why you want to build cooldown and, um,. Playing with Agni, you want to build penetration. I don't know if there's any pen in here, but I realize that this isn't my true build. But it's the build we're going to go off for the second of the video. I might not get Warlock Sash or Chrono Spendant. I will probably get Spear Magus. Um, yeah, Spear Magus. Because it gives you pen and your abilities reduce their protections. Alright, so on to the next ability. The next ability is a land attack. Pretty decent. Um, if you probably were to put, let's say, four archers from shoulder to shoulder, you'll probably hit all four really easily. Um, it probably, if you were to stand, so, okay, so when two, when a minion wave walks up and they're confronting in a lane, if you stand at the middle of the minion waves, you will reach the enemy archers. So it's pretty good. It has range to it. Um, it can clear, not, yeah, it can clear a wave late game. Uh, well, late game, mid lane, mid game, because this is the one you want to level up the most. And it should be maxed out by level, I want to say nine. Nine is when you can max out your first ability, but you always want to max out your alt. So if for damage, we're going to leave it at level four, because you're probably going to have your alt around level two. Um, Agni summons a wave of fire in front of him and that scorches all enemies in its path, igniting Oxus fumes, which will cause a one second stun and can also deal that tick damage, that dot damage, that burn damage, if your passive is up. So, how much damage does it do and what does ability really help you accomplish? This is your clear. This is the item that people fear when they're playing. It's an Agni besides your ultimate and because it's a giant wave you don't really have to aim it and it's just it's an amazing it's one of my favorites and um and uh but um i want to say 3.9 this um damage got increased so i think i don't know it's like at 250 went up to 290 and i think that was still at like 80 so this all kind of went up some because you know Agni used to be pretty weak, and he got a pretty nice, pretty nice buff. I know that. And um, so let's go to damage. Let's say mid game, you're level ten. Um, if you're level ten, you'll probably have this level five. Level nine, you'll probably have your alt at level two, and this at level four. Let's say level ten, because that's where we got our damage from. So let's get sixty-five percent of two hundred and fifty. So two fifty times point six five. That's one hundred and sixty-two and a half magical power added to 290 so added to 290 that's 425 and 
25 damage. Now, if I'm correct, let's go to the God build. Um, let's get rid of this, this, and no, this. And how much health do we have? We have 1370. 452 can be a lot of damage in min on the mid lane because that can easily knock you down like a little under a quarter but again if you have your passive up that will drop you down a quarter health especially going against any other mage besides you know the tanky ones um but also the thing is if you ignite it with noxious fumes you can get that split second to all dash throw in an auto attack or two but um on to the next ability the next ability is uh, Agni's mobility it's his escape route and also it's honestly the number one used item in your kit if you probably record a game and how many abilities you used on the um, it go one two three four you might not use path of flames more but you can see yourself running away and using path of flames to ignite toxic fumes a lot more often because this item is just amazing when you're trying to get away and i'll get into more tips and tricks after this so let's get into it it's a dash clearly it's path of flames um it's uh it affects the enemies and the damage is magical clearly because he's a mage um agni blazes a path forward and a quick dash leaving en leaving flames behind him blah, blah, blah. any enemies passing through the flames catch fire and burn for damage every 0.5 seconds for two seconds igniting noxious fumes and igniting noxious fumes Agni is immune to knockback while dashing so basically if you're dashing at a on here and he activates I don't know I think this is one that shoots the thing at you you will not go backwards you will go through it and take it like a champ and it be in his face and be like what's up bro Ogden. you know um so 0.5 seconds so 0.5 for two seconds so you're taking the damage four times so let's see what the uh damage is so let's say this is oh I'm so sorry I need to go back to here and give you your late game results. Um, late game, this right here will do. Um, 65 will do plus 290. It will do 865 damage in late game. And let's do late game Agni 20. Late game Agni has that. That is almost half of Agni's health. 869 is almost half of his health. So you can definitely say that the damage on this ability does not fall off late game. If anything, it stays in there and it stays strong. Um, sorry, now on to the next side or to the damage. We've already gone on with this one. Um, so let's say you're level 10. Um, you're what you want to do with Agni, you want to max out your 2, max out your 4, your 3, and then your 1. So, your 3 is probably level 2, because you would have to level up that before you can level up that. So yeah, let's say this is level 2, because when you get to the situation of you have to level up something, and your alt can't be leveled up, but you can't max out your 2 anymore, you have to max out your 3, or upgrade your 3. You can't level up your two anymore. You have to level up your three because it's point blocking you, I guess you could say. So, um, let's say you're level two, 30 power, 15% of your magical power. So, late, or we're doing mid game. So, 250 times 0 0.15 is 3, 37.5 plus uh, 30, which is like 67.5, and that times four because you're dealing 0.5 for two seconds so that's four dots of damage so you will be dealing a total of 270 damage now that's amazing because you can dash through somebody and just deal that damage instantly now if someone sits there in that fire 
I'm pretty sure that it's gonna re like restart the two seconds, you know, because if I run if I run through it, I get the two seconds. If it goes away, I run back through it. I'm gonna get another two seconds. But I mean, who's gonna be able to run in and out of your fire? It's on the ground, it's lit up for three seconds. I mean, they're stupid. That or they're really low in health and they just killed themselves. But I mean, 270 damage. Now, if we do late game statistics with the 60 and the 8. 891 so 891 times 0.15 plus 60 times 4 373 damage that's not a lot but that could still be fatal to a Loki to another Augie to a raw to a Susanu to an Alkong to any low base character, assassin or mage, or even a hunter or ADC, and it can be it can be fatal because I mean <laughs> every single bit of damage counts. Because when I'm playing as Loki and I alt in, a lot of times my one will kill people. My one deals damage over time, and it, it normally finishes the job for me when I can't. So um, don't ever underestimate burn damage, dot damage, whatever you want to call it, damage over time. Because it is very, very useful. And, again, Path of Flames is very... It, it's... It's, um, the second... It's the, probably... Besides Noxious Fumes, it's the most needed item in this kit. But it's not the most powerful. And I'll get back to it in Tips and Tricks. Onto his ultimate, Rain Fire. The thing about this one is, you can clearly see, right off the bat, this costs zero mana. That is one of the, this is the reason why his all is the best, not the best, I wouldn't say the best, is up in the top 10 best alts of the game because it costs zero. This depends on his halo. When Agni is in the game, you can see a halo over his head. It can have one rock, two rocks, three rocks on it, or no rocks. And you can have up to three rocks that you could rain from the sky that deal massive damage, especially when they're all chained together. And they have a cooldown of 20 seconds. This 20 seconds can be affected by cooldown reduction. Uh, Agni, so every 20 seconds, Agni gains a flaming halo that can be expended to summon a giant meteor. At his ground target location, he can summon one every 0.8 seconds, igniting noxious fumes. So this also ignites noxious fumes and also activates his passive, which can deal that extra. So I'm guessing, let's. Let's get the late game, because no one cares about mid game alts. Late game alts is where the fun is, man. So, if you have your passive up, so 89 times 0 0.1 plus 5 times what, 6? Yes, yeah, 6. Times 6. That's 564 damage you're doing on top of 564. Let me write that down real quick. 564 plus the 1 second stun. If you have noxious fumes, on top of um, 891 times 0.6 plus 300, 834 plus the 564 from the burn damage, and that's only one meteor. If you can put down three, if you hit all three, um, real quick. Let me write down the initial hit of the first one. Plus five six four plus eight three four. If you land two meteors and your passive, you deal twenty two hundred damage. Uh correct me if I'm wrong, but Ogni's dead. If you land your alt twice and with your passive, Ogni is flat out gone. And now, you still have one more Halo left. You could save it for an emergency, but you know, let's just hit Agni one more time and deal a total of a whopping 3k. That's called an overkill, folks. He is dead. Agni is dead if you hit Agni with your passive and three, all three of your ults. Now, um, let's get to the tips and tricks. Uh, I'm done with the damage. I'm not going to calculate any more damage, but um, I will calculate on a scale of 1 to 10 on how awesome Omni is. Um, first tip, use your 1 
Oh, well, first step, technically, you're passive. Always build your passive off those minions. I mean, there's nothing wrong with landing four basic attacks. You're building up your mana through mana per five seconds, I think it is. And you're building up that dot damage, which can be very helpful. Because if you active, if you have your passive and you activate flame wave and you hit the whole entire minion wave, they all get hit with that dot damage. So it helps you clear the wave better. It's not the highest health minion. It's not the first minion. It's not the first god. It's everything who gets hit with flame wave or rain fire. And um, so noxious wave, or noxious flames, the one thing I normally do is I use it for zone control. If you notice your opponent wants to leave his tower, put it on the left side of the tower. So he has to move out of the right, or he can just sit back and wait out those 10 seconds while you're out there clearing a wave. And this can also deal passive damage to a minion wave. So early game, you drop this, you wait 10 sec 9 seconds, it deals all these damage to the wave minions. You you, act, you do your basic attacks, you get your passive up, you throw your flame wave down, you kill the minion wave early game. But, I mean, there's other ways to clear the minion wave early game. That's just one thing if you, and the enemy's not there. But, uh, when I'm not using noxious flames or fumes to uh, stun an enemy, I'm using it to zone them out, like I said earlier. If you're going with an Agni and you see noxious fumes on the ground you're not gonna want to step in it you know he can stun you you don't want to be stunned for a second even though it's just a second but to your mind when you're stunned it feels like a long time a very long time and you don't want to be stunned and because you're afraid if that's a good Agni player they're gonna wreck your face and they're gonna punish you for stepping in their fog or their fume and so um, that's kind of it I'll give you another trick when you get to the third ability but for flame wave, there really isn't any tips with this. Use it to clear minion waves, hit it accurately, um, build up your passive, and it just a barely touching your uh, noxious fumes will ignite it. Just barely touching it will ignite it. And also, um, path of flames. So there's not really much to cover off that. Path of flames is it's a great thing to get out you never want to use it for combat really unless you know you can secure the kill and you know you're not going to be attacked or ganked so um the thing about flame waves is you can charge in and then drop a uh, drop your one your one so this lasts for three seconds if you drop your one while it just all it has to do is barely touch your flame your uh your trail waves or your um what, what would you call it um yeah your flame your f trail of flames it just barely has a touch and once it touches it it ignites the whole entire radius and it's just it's pretty brutal because if you're running away from somebody you know they're faster than you that one second can save your life so you dash away from them you know they're sitting right next to your thing all you have to do is uh get out your one Turn around, drop it on them while it's also touching your flame wave, stun them for a split second, turn around and run, and that one second can save your life, folks. It has saved my life countless of times, and it is amazing when you, like, you just don't expect it happening, but it just, it comes to you. No one ever taught me this trick. I came up with my own. Granted, it's the common sense, but Path of Flames is honestly one of my favorite items in this kit. Because it's badass, it looks cool, and it can really synergize with this first one and give his kit a lot of flavor. And hell, it deals some pretty good damn damage. And um, so also you can drop your one on your opponent, dash toward them, stun them, activate your flame of waves, and if they try to escape, alt them. That's all up to you. But another thing is, so I'm going to go to your alt now, and I'm going to give your final tips on your alt, and I'm going to let you look at the I'm going to let you look at the build I would actually use, and I will let you guys go. So, um, rain fire. Um, you can have one, two, or three. You always want cooldown on Agni so you can get these faster. And never underestimate an Agni when you're on low health because he can dash. Does it give you a radius? No. 
He can dash. Um, okay, let's use increments of minion waves. He can dash a whole minion wave. And then he can ult probably the distance of two or three minion waves. And so basically, if you're two or three minion waves away from him, he dashes, he can ult you, hit you, you're dead. But the thing is, this has like a second delay. So if he barely catches you when he casts it, you're free. You're golden. As if you're playing against an Augie. If you're playing as an Augie, you always... Don't just shoot your ult. Make sure you know you can land your ult. It's like Scylla's ult. It's very hard to land, but when you hit it, you feel like a boss. And when you keep going with Scylla, you feel amazing. But this Rain of Fire is probably my favorite because, again, it costs zero. If an Augie is at zero, don't chase them if you're at low health because he can easily ult you. Another thing is, if you're new with Agni and you're getting ganked by uh, assassins at low health and you just can't, you can't deal with them, just, and you have all three of these, click your alt, aim at your feet, and just spam it and just launch three at your feet. One of the greatest tips I could probably give you. Also, another tip is playing as Agni. When you cast Rain of Fire, like I said, you get that second delay. You can cast Rain of Fire, activate your one, and drop your smoke instantly. So you can chain your one before your ult even hits the ground, thus giving your ult basically a stun. So if you ever are playing against an Agni, and you're like, holy crap, his ult just stunned me, what? No, he cast in the Noxus Fumes right before his ult hit. And um, also, build up your passive, it deals a lot of damage. Um, uh, what else can I say and give you guys a tip on? Um... All I can say is practice, 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 and aim your all. If you can land those alts, you're golden. Um, let me give you a quick build I would use. I probably would uh, not use that, no. I'd probably use this to start out. What is this? Oh, no. I would... Um, okay, yeah. I would get that. I'd get Book of Thoth first. I wouldn't get um, that. I would get movement. Get this for the cooldown reduction. So you don't need. Actually, yeah, get the pendant. The pendant should be in your core. Um, cooldown. And then right after you get your book of thought, your thought book, and then you get your boots, you want to go straight for Spear Magus. So, real quick, power. Book of Thoth, Shoes of Focus, Spear Magus, and then Chronos Pendant, and then you're golden. I would always end a magic build with Rod to Hitterdy because it increases your damage so much and leave this all up to you. Um, you don't have that much mobility, but you do have a good bit of mobility and utility and stunning and control with Ogni. So if you want to, you can get Lifesteal, you can get anything you want, you can get Doom Orb, you can get more pin, you can get more health, mana, sustain, defense. This la that fifth item is all to you. Just make sure you follow this simple thing and then Wild Tuhidity. If you want to get Warlock Sash, get it. It's a great item. I would probably get it. There's nothing better than stacks. Stacks are probably the best thing you can get because they just make your items so much stronger. Um, I want to save this because actually if I play Agni, this is what I want. I would actually probably just you know what? Hell. Whoa. Why can't I? Oh, it's War, not War. Oh, oops. Warlock Sash. I would build Book of Thoth. Shoes of Focused. Um, Warlock Sash. Spear Magus. Oh, sorry. Pendant. And then Rod of Twitterty. Relics? No. Relics is all up to you. You can get Purification. You can get Sanctuary. That's all up to you. It's how you play um, potions or consumables. Just. Nope. Just buy that, buy that, max out both of these equally. Your choice depends on how you play. All I can say is this, this is what I would do if I was playing Agni. I'm going to hit save. I have to go, but I would love to talk to you guys more. And 
hope this guide really helps and I hope to do more and next time I will be doing Amuz and Cobb. I've never played Amuz and Cobb and I intend on learning while I teach you how to play Amuz and Cobb or I've seen in the Smite community called AMC.